Ain't that's how you say like my name or something? Yeah, Je m'appelle. Yeah, so Je m'appelle Jappel. Je m'appelle J Hill. Yeah, Welcome. Yeah. Johnny Blaze is here. What's poppin'? <laughs> Nothing. We talking about um, uh we talking about PTSD. Yes. Damn, like what made you what what happened? You said you check yourself in the hospital, like Yeah, I um well, it's more of like, at, I knew it was something, but I was like, I don't know what it is. Cause they were like, oh, you know, everybody got a little bipolar. And I'm like, no, 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 everybody don't got bipolar in them. What are you talking about? Right. Um, so I was like, you know what? Let me go and see what's wrong with me. Cause I, it was like constant, um, just different situations. Like um, my emotions would be up and down. Sometimes I'd be sad, sometimes I'm depressed out of nowhere. And then I would just be like, you know what? Let me go and seek some help because it got really bad. Like my grandmother passed away. My friend had got murdered and I was like spiraling. And I'm like, I'm going to go get some help. So I stayed mm. in there for like three, almost a month. How long ago was this? Um, I got a October 14th of 2001. 2021. 21. Yeah. So yeah, that was, it was recent. That was um like literally like eight months ago. And that was around the time you dropped your, uh, your video in L.A., right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just kind of, it was just getting worse and worse. I think I just got tired of like smiling and mm -hmm. then it don't really be like, I'm not happy. Like, it's just like a cover up. So I was like, let me go and see what's wrong and see what they'll diagnose me with. So he's like, you have PTSD. And I'm like, huh? What's that? <laughs> he, he, and I started crying. He was like, you don't even know what it is. Why you cry? I was like, it's got to be something. He was like, well, I can make you feel better. At least it's not, I'm not saying you're bipolar. So I was like, what kind of doctor are you? <laughs> you're not making this anywhere like better. But then I started reading up on it because I didn't want to just be like, oh, I have PTSD. You know how people just be like, okay, because somebody diagnosed. And the things that were happening, I was just like, yeah, that's me. You know, it's trauma from like your childhood or like it could be trauma from anything like as a child. And, um, or it can actually not be actually from that because I don't want to say it the wrong way. Um, any type of trauma that makes you feel that you're going to like be very depressed, sad. Um, some people can get to the point where they're suicidal. Um, I was having all of those. I had all those triggers like all together. So mm -hmm. I was just like, I want to get help. And he's like, let's try this medication. And that's why I always tell people like, it's okay. Like you can still function and have a wonderful life. You can still be a brilliant person just because you might take medication. That person don't, they might need boxing. They might want to run or exercise to get over their, their um, whatever they're diagnosed with. There's different ways. But for me, this is what works for me. So I just took it a step further because some people tend to like, you know, drink and what you ask me like, do you drink? I'm like, no. Um, I decided not to drink, mm -hmm. you know, because I was taking over two, three medications. So I'm on four. Yeah. And I became open with it after a couple months, like recently, because I'm just like, you know what? I want to talk about it because people, some people feel like they're weird or they're different or they're not accepted because of it. And I, I feel like also in the black community, like we don't look at that. We don't look at depression and sad and um, being bipolar and stuff. They're like, oh, that's not, it doesn't exist. I want to be the person to show people like, no, it does exist. And it's very important because a, a lot of the percentage of deaths in the black community is because of that, mm. you know? So that's kind of how it happened. It's you know, crazy. It's, Cause I don't speak on this uh, a lot, but my, um, I have an older brother. Like my mm -hmm. mom's had me at a very like, Oh, she was like 45 oh, and my oh, brother. Okay. Yeah. My mom's is raped. Mm. Yeah. So like, I'm like a four, uh, like a miracle baby. I used to always say, but like I said it to say, my brother was like, you know, he's a lot older than me. Mm -hmm. And I never really, really had a, a real relationship with him because um, he had bipolar. But like this was, um, I think, it was schizophrenic and bipolar. Mm -hmm. And um, like I, I hear stories about like how he was so like just so cool and like just hip and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. then like um, that happened, and then you know it just changed. So yeah, because it's, it's it's not like a it's not like one way. Mm -hmm. It's like. I'm able to control my PTSD by doing things that I love to do. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm frustrated, like that's why I'm like, I'm not afraid no more. I was so scared. Like when I first got out, I changed everything. Like I literally changed how I ate. I lost like 30 something pounds. Like I started doing yoga meditation. I read like the Bible, about uh, scripture of the Bible, like once a day, like every day I've had a scripture every day and I explain to myself what it means to me. I tell myself I'm a winner and stuff because this all pertains to the PTSD. Little things like words can trigger 
and I'll just be like, that's just the word. Mm. Back then, it'd be like, no, I'm triggered. I want to black out. I want to ruin my career. I want to do all these things so nobody can see what really is the main thing is that I'm gifted and I just been through a lot and I need to figure out how a way to express that without people looking at me and be like, you're freaking crazy. Man, you it's know? crazy because so. like anything can be a trigger. Like literally Yeah, anything. it was a lot of triggers for me. It was from grandmother passing, the, the things that I was going through as a child. Like I just, I've been through a lot and it's like, I don't want to be the girl that's like, oh, I went through a lot. Feel bad for me and just give me anything because I'm supposed to be pity. Like, no, I want to get it out the mud. I want to show people the growth and stuff. And that's kind of was my, my, myself was my motivation. Yo, it's, um, yeah. when I, um, I, I was doing my research and I was just thinking like, damn, mm -hmm. you remind me of myself. First of all, let's uh say, Shout out to the Gemini's in the building. You know what I'm saying? Gang, gang. Stop playing because I already <laughs> started. You feel and me? And it's not even not. We when got what? It's one more day, June 10th. Oh, my shit is June the 5th. Stop playing with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who, they don't understand us. Who loves Gemini's more than Gemini's? Man, listen. They, let's, let's break this down, all right? So they, I'm going to tell you how these Zodiacs is us. <laughs> okay? Because they, they be playing with us. It's 12 Zodiac signs, right? Mm -hmm. Including us, right? They want to put us in there. Okay, cool. But this is how I'm about to get there. So hit me out. All right. So if it's 12 of y'all and y'all say that we got 12 personalities and we in the middle of the year, don't that make the rest of the Zodiacs duplicates of us? Mm. We they said we got two personalities. I definitely got her that I was like, got 12. 12? Oh, 13. I'm not but surprised. The point is. Yeah, yeah. They us. You know what I think when it comes to Gemini's, to be <laughs> honest, I feel like, um, first, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lighter, that's so oh, I yeah, I have brought y'all some lighters. It's stuff. fire. When so I, not um, nobody can take your lighter. Be when, like... Uh, <laughs> when it comes when it comes to uh, Gemini's, I feel like people always say they got dual personalities. But what I will say is, me personally, I think um, we don't have any balance. So nah. because I feel like it's yeah. when I'm happy, I'm happy as hell. When I'm upset, I'm like probably all the upset. Nobody. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So like, but I feel like everybody got everybody not like nobody everybody's is, like that. Yeah, nobody is happy a hundred percent of the time. Ain't no way. Ain't nobody. Sad. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he different. Yeah, facts. He a different type of flex. Yo, but yeah, I was looking. I was doing my research, and I was like, "Yo, she reminds me of me, bro. This is crazy." And like, I really, I to, to say that you though. be trying to like hold it in because, like, I, I'm naturally like a nice person, mm -hmm. but people got the other half because. I didn't want to show that because mm -hmm. I always show the nice and people, I didn't have people bet on me to date me and I done caught them in the date and let them date me for a long time. The team that with the person that bet them and got my bread off mm -hmm. of myself mm -hmm. <laughs> and then dumped the person. Like it's, I've been through some crazy things and I'm just like, sometimes you don't want to be happy. That I think that's what's wrong with people. Like we think it's supposed to be a certain way how we're supposed to be. Like, no, nah, I don't want to be like every fucking body else. I want to be me. Mm. If you think I'm mean, that's what you think. If you think I'm happy, that's what you think. I wasn't born on this earth to make everybody happy, and I'm not going to. But my growth is going to show regardless. No, it's how I, your demeanor, your your energy, like I believe in that. So mm. it's just like you take it or leave it. Like I do want to take the time to um to recognize your growth. Um, I don't really watch. It uh, just started growing too, boy. Yeah, nah, yeah, you look fire. You, you all saw lit. You Man, I used to wear the little fake ones. You know, no, I seen the, um, you know the, the little strip that they got, and you just tattoo that bit on. No, I, I had know. those. I don't know nothing about that. I just know I was watching when the, it was uh, hot. It, it slide off, but for real, yeah, I wouldn't know. I knew I watched the uh, the Hollywood Unlocked interview. <laughs> And I guess the guy, the gay guy was trying to like come for your edges or some shit like that. Yeah, they grew back. Yeah, now what, bitch? Yeah, yeah. So, but well, fuck them niggas. But yeah, so, um, yeah, I just want to recognize the growth, right? And I want to, uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk about this. I wanted to open the show with this, but we had more important conversations to have. We had. <laughs> so, you know. Did you buy that? What? No, 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 no. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> but no, what I want to say is, I want to say, first of all, um, I acknowledge the growth. And, you know, it was hard. For me, we had, we we spoke off camera and like um you were saying something about et cetera or whatever and it was hard mm -hmm. for me to send that message because you know I'm I'm a yeah. I'm a growing talent growing platform and I want all the lit people I can get you know what yeah. I'm saying but at the end of the day my platform is for people to learn and I feel like you have such a unique story that you know what I'm saying if we if we put a cap on it then nobody yeah. you get know what I'm trying I to think, say I think I think with people like when I do interviews they just be like what's gonna be said like they just the way I talk people are intrigued I'm short like it's just all these things that people never knew because they're so focused on what I had gave out like the negative and stuff like that that now when I'm showing this it's like oh it's like that's not her and I'm like 
Yes, it is. It's, it's growth. Mm. I don't think that people really understand what I've been through. I've been told that I'm not going to do this. I've been told, oh, you're just going to be a stripper all your life. And then I'm looking at Neo giving me a record. I'm looking at NLE and be a young boy, Macy Gray. I done wrote for goddamn Trina. Kevin Gates, Boosie, Trina, Tory Lanez. I mean, I could just keep on going and ain't have to pay. And I'm a, I'm a flex. You know what I'm saying? So I just use that as my my push. Mm. I'm not going to hear Let nobody tell me no. Um, you don't want me to go through your door. I'll make one. I'm just, I'm not hearing no. I think that, that that's what happened with the growth of me being like, all right, I'm in a space where I'm happy, genuinely happy. I'm I'm doing people right and they're doing me right. And now it's just to the point where it's just like, I don't want to hear no. I ain't mm. going to hear no. I ain't trying to hear none of that. But all, like, <laughs> personally, right, I think you got to this place by growing through everything that yeah, I wouldn't has change happened it. before. I would not change So why it. not, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want to talk about everything? Um... I, well, as an artist, when you do interviews so many times, okay, it just sounds like you know Redundant. how like it's like if I asked you what's your favorite color, and then you said blue, and then I'm like, well, and you said it was my favorite color was blue all my life, and then I asked you again, I'm like, so what was your favorite color when you was a kid, and you're like, bro, I just said blue, blue. <laughs> so it's like, but I have to understand as an artist. This is what interviewers, this is what people, this is what, what comes with it. Mm. So you just got to, and mind you, I'm getting back. It's only been eight months where I'm like, I barely even club. Like, mm. they got to force me. You know, if it's a check or something, I'm out. But I I changed everything. I'm like a little hermit. No, so I, I'm getting back into it. So sometimes my label will step in and be like, hey, don't ask this. And I'm like, you know what? And then it'd be hard for me to send that too, because it's just like, kind of takes away from, it's like you're, you're critiquing your own interview. Mm. And I don't want that. I like surprises. Cause boy, I'm a slip. You ask me some crime. I'm like, so that single that's about to drop <laughs> featuring. Yeah. I'm nah, gonna get, facts. you gonna get yours in. I'm gonna get mine in too. No, nah, facts. 100%. <laughs> we gonna, we gonna work this out. Nah, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's dope because I, I'm, and I'm glad we can even have this conversation. Right? Yeah. Cause I, I think for me, I think people think I'm like, no, no, hell no. I, I mean, <laughs> and even if you were, it's just like, it's okay. That's why nah, I told you, like. I be you, feeling, and I be, I don't be liking that either with, with artists. Not to cut you nah, off, go ahead, do your thing. I, I be thinking, like, as an artist, if you know you're not feeling good that day, if you know you're coming in to really just try to, like, go in on the interview or whoever's interview, like, if you know that, just reschedule it. Like, mm. or if you know you're having a bad day, it's okay. Like, don't do it because you're going to, it's not going to look bad. It's never going to look bad on an interviewer when they ask you the most craziest questions. So it's going to look bad on you because it's how you respond. I don't know nowadays because um, I don't know if you've seen it, but a uh, personality on um, is an Atlanta station. I think her name is L'Oreal. I think she probably was on. That's my show. baby. Yeah. So like they're like kind of like um, going back and forth with Kalani. That's my baby, too. You yeah. know what should have happened? You've seen her energy. Y'all should have never recorded. Mm. And I love both of them. I mean, you should have never recorded or either you got it, it got it got what it got. It got the views. It got, but that's usually, and it wasn't them trying because I know them. I know they're not desperate for views, or I'm not even gonna put that out because they're sweethearts. Her and Headcracker are fire. It's more of like if I, I'm an energy baby. If I'm an interviewer and I'm interviewing you, and I feel like it's off, and then you don't know what I might have going on. I might be like, I'm ready for you to go ahead and try to be funny. Now I want to snap on you. Now it's like you don't know my energy. I don't know yours. I would have just been like, hey, you know what? Let's try it another day. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, you could tell by looking. I could look at her face and tell she didn't want to do it. But it's actually, it's kind of 50-50. It's actually nobody's fault. It's it's not y'all fault. It's not their fault. It's just you got to go off a vibe. When I feel the vibe is bad, oh, I'm out. I'm, at this point, I couldn't be no interview. I'm like, you want to smoke a blunt? So me, that's like, she I feel like a for drink. the artist, I get, wrong it. With you. I get it for the artist, I get it. But for like the personality is work. Because I've had like it's interviews. It's your job. Yeah, I've had interviews where people... And like it's my job to make them comfortable. You know what I'm saying? They be clowning Wendy. Like, I don't like Wendy because of what she said, but would you say it? No. So somebody has to do it. Mm. And she's a person. And that's why her views are up. That's why y'all continue to watch. If she was such this evil, terrible person, why do you keep watching her? Why does her views keep on doubling up? Mm. Because you enjoy it. Because it's not you, it's somebody else. And you enjoy watching it. Right. But you don't enjoy it being you that does it. Mm. But you enjoy somebody else saying what your inner self wants to say. And that's how I look. That's why you get fan bases from like you'll have a fan base as a as a person that has your podcast or you'll have a, a person that has a lot of fan base because they're a singer. It's bigger than that. It's how you move and everything. So it's and usually people become fans because it's something that they can't do. And low key, they kind of like it. 
there. Like, I like that Wendy's rude. I like that she talks about people. But I'm going to sit on here and comment and say, that's so bad. But then you're the number one person as soon as she gets on TV watching. My, my number one consumer. So people go back and forth. But if you put a light on their ass and really show them, they're like, oh, I didn't do it. Their hands is behind their back. Mm-hmm. But they want to do the crazy shit, but they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to say it's me. Mm-hmm. I'm one of motherfuckers. I did it. I did it. I did it. What? What no. you going to do? Facts. What you going to say? If it's my mistake, it's my mistake. And I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow from it. Now, I personally just want to say thank you from, because I, I think I represent the, the small medias. And I know I'm doing good. And Never like, say I'm, you small. You nah, always nah, be. No, nah, nah, I'm, I'm big. I'm all right. Big, big, big guy. Jay. I'm good. Big J. It's just, I, when you know I say I represent the small media guys, <laughs> because I, I still remember like it was yesterday when I was doing internet radio and just wasn't getting the views that I, I am getting now. And you know it, what I'm it's, it's, a, it's like, I understand yeah. that as an artist, you just like, Ugh. It's a blessing for sure. So, then when it start happening, it's like. Yeah. So I just want to say man. thank you for, um. For us being able to get through oh, that, I appreciate that for sure. Because like, I, I understand. No, I like when that. I read it and I was like, I get it. Like I'm very open and stuff. It's just texting is terrible to me because if he sounded like I'm mean, I'm like, damn, that's not how I want to No, I ain't take it that way at all. I hate texting. I ain't take it that way at all. <laughs> but no, that's why, why, why don't, if you had to, not a label aside, right? Mm-hmm. If you had to have it your way, right? Why wouldn't you want to talk about, I don't want to say bad things, but it, the past, just the, 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 your the story? old Johnny, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the story that came with it that made you who you are now. Um, I'm not a, I'm not afraid. Back up off me, Mike. Goddamn, <laughs> boy, took my damn 44W off my damn face. All right, so, <laughs> um, I don't mind talking about my life. Mm. You ask it, I'll tell it. It's, I feel like we just be wanting to move on, like, and I do too, low mm. key. And I just want to, you only get rid, not necessarily get rid of the bad things. You only get rid of whatever that people think of by doing great. Mm. And then they think of that. Then they think of whatever else that you're going to do. They kind of like, it kind of goes, it's there, but it's not there. Right. So I think that's how I look at it. But I don't mind, if it does get brought up, I'm not going to be like, ah, da, 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 because I still have to represent myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say the wrong. Then it's like, well, forget what he asked. Did you see how she just reacted? Mm. And that's where it goes. Like, it's all in how. You react I mean, that's and fact, do though. things. It's really is. So I don't be minding. It's just like I be having so many other exciting things. I'm like, I want to talk about this too. <laughs> do you do you feel like sometimes that um your past overshadow what you're trying to do now? No, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I, I, yeah, okay. Honestly, you don't give a damn. But do you feel like that happens sometimes? Mm, I used to say yeah, but no. Mm. Um, because I look at the things that people say I couldn't do, and I'm like. Uh, okay. So what I, do I, I could, do? Like they couldn't say I, I couldn't do a lot. I could I wouldn't be a musician. I wouldn't do like just be successful. You know how people are. They just be like you won't be this. You won't do that. You're not gonna do this because of this. You're not gonna do this because of this. And I'm like, yes, I am, and I'll do it. And I'm like, see. But it's not for them. It's like for myself, my inner little Gemini thing. It's like I can do that. Why would I even listen to you? Like you're crazy. I could do that. Mm-hmm. And then I'll tell myself, yeah, let, like, let's get to it. It's like an accomplishment for me not to entertain other people but just the success like i came from the hood you feel me like i ain't have nothing like my mama worked two three jobs like my daddy worked we wasn't like where them families where it was given to you like some of my clothes came from walmart i was cool with it that's probably why my damn favorite story is walmart al5 figure it out y'all some of y'all might need it with your ph balance you know what i'm saying <laughs> want to get clean it's called soap um, <laughs> uh, and I just always been that person where I've, I've cherished things from sitting with my family in the house and we, we five deep, but it's two bedrooms. Like, it's just, I found other things of happiness. So growing up, it's just like, when you're not giving something and then you start getting opportunities. It's like, yeah, let me keep on doing that to get even better. So mm-hmm. I don't mind talking about my, if somebody asks, it's just, I just be like, whatever. So don't bother me. Let's talk about it then. Um, welcome to the interview, guys. We just had to have a, oh, shit. a heart-to-heart conversation. Oh, damn. No, nah, we've we been started. <laughs> we hey, 20 minutes welcome in. to Jay. But no, nah, uh, question. <laughs> when, the last time, when the last time have you spoke to your moms? Um, a couple days ago. Well, last week. How was your relationship? Um... I don't know. For me, it's I love her. Mm. I you can't make me hate my family for sure. Like I don't give a damn what they did. Like I've always been that person. Like I really live by that. Like that loyal thing. I look just like her. We act just alike. 
we smile just to like, and I'm always, I think that's what keeps me by. Even though like when we, if we disagree or don't talk as much, it's just like, girl, I love you. It doesn't bother me. Like nothing really bothers me as much. And I get that. And I, um, you know, I, uh, it's funny because you talk about therapy a lot, and mm-hmm. I, 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 that's what helps. Yeah, I'm still in therapy. <laughs> Me too. And my my question is, um, you know, how were you able to get get over that? So for the people that don't know, I'm pretty sure, like, you're mm-hmm. you're, you're so transparent in your conversation. Yeah, that's why I was hurt when you sent me the message, like. Nigga, you talk about this with everybody else. Like, don't short me. <laughs> Why me? Don't short me. But, 4K. <laughs> but anyway. <Man? laughs> um, but nah, so before you moved to New York, you moved to New York because of the situation with um your moms and your stepdad. Right? Well, it wasn't my mother. I mean, well, just your stepdad, stepdad, your stepdad. Um, and, yeah. But she sent you to New York or? Nope, we just, I moved. I moved to New York. Yeah, it's just something, you know, start your life over. What yeah. was my dad? What was my dad? My real dad. So right, you moved to New York with your dad. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, step. But your stepdad wasn't he with your mom's or no my dad my real dad oh it was your real dad that... no 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 I moved with my yeah real no I'm dad. saying before you moved because this, 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 yeah, this, yeah. Your, mm-hmm. your, he yeah raped you or Molested. he molested you mm-hmm. but was he with your mom's was he um, together yeah so that's why I, that's why I bring up yeah but this. just because one person does that it has nothing to do with the other person mm. my mom is always you know and I've always said this in interviews and they're like you don't hate no I don't and that's probably why I just don't talk about it because it's like people expect me to hate people and I'm like I don't have that that's a strong word I don't I mean yeah, I don't expect like, you to hate her I really yeah. want to have an understanding of don't dislike her anything. it's really I can't even talk about it because we're in the court so I don't want to talk about oh you your mom's yeah I don't want to can't really speak on that like that <laughs> that's why I'm like yeah so S- so <laughs> wait 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 the situation like you when you say you can't speak about you can't speak about your mom's or can't speak a- about it like, okay yeah that oh. was what that text was mm. that was why so okay so wait dang Damn. i love my mom <laughs> she's a sweetheart <laughs> right so well, how, you love her i'm pretty mm-hmm. sure you had to get over it without speaking about the situation mm-hmm. how i'm trying to figure out how was you able to get over it? like how was you able because you know love yeah but is it really and, and so you see how it's like nobody understands it like but because everybody has their own way i love my mom i got one of them Right, that ain't gonna change. I don't so, but that like that's it. Like, don't make me hater. It don't. I'm nah, not it's not here. about. I'm not here to like. I don't. Let's let's say I'm not here to, to 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 cameras aside. I'm not here to like make a story of you hating your mom. That's not what I'm. No, 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 I'm not saying that. What yeah. I want to know is, you know, because there's so many people who go through similar situations, or not even that situation. Like, um, shit, my my relationship with my mom's right, mm-hmm. and um, I think I would say the same thing. Like, you know, I I, mean, I, I still say that my mom's is like my my mom's my heart. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like she, um, I am who I am because of her. For yeah. a fact. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But you know, it's things that make us feel away just being children. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'll never forget. I had the conversation with my uh, therapist, and I cried because, you know, it was so uncomfortable to have a conversation because, like, it's just like, bro, like, I don't blame my mom for nothing. Like, yeah. she was the best mom she could ever be, and I and I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. But well, it wasn't human. until yeah, it yeah. wasn't until that conversation that I understood that then how does it make you feel? Yeah. And that's why I'm asking you, like, how was you able to get over it? Forget the, I get you love her. I get, I get you only get one, but Fo- how, how did you fight through that? Focusing on myself. Like, I, everything is about me now. I was always the one that cared about everybody else. I've never really focused on myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I just start, it don't affect me, nothing. Like, it don't, I don't know how to explain it. It just doesn't bother me. It doesn't consume my life like that. It's just stairs what it is so you talked about these things in therapy or yeah yeah i have a therapist and a psychiatrist mm. yeah and i don't have a shame in it or anything um it's the best thing that's ever happened to me like if i didn't have that and then just the great people around me yeah, it'd probably be spiraled what was the conversations like, like with those people around you to get you over that um hump or it don't even be about my childhood or like trauma or anything it'd be about what are we gonna do now you know what I'm saying? Like, what are we going to do to make you happy? What makes you happy? Because my, you can have friends, but they really might not know you. And they really didn't know me. Like, my friends really didn't know everything about me. Like, what I felt, even with my mom's situation, anything. So, I think that conversation was, like, um, more of a shocker to them. Because it's like, damn, I, I don't know her. I got to start all over. Mm. Our friendship, like, that's how they were looking at me. Like, damn, I didn't know that. I didn't know that bothered you. I didn't know when I say these things bother you. That's what therapy helped me with, too. I was afraid to really tell people, like, what I felt. Because I feel like I'm always hurting somebody's feelings. Always being, like, a um, 
not an introvert. Uh, uh, was a person that takes people energy. Like if you're sad, I feel sad now. Empath. 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 There you go. So I don't want to be like that no more. That's what my when my mom and me disagreed. Like I would be an empath. Like I would feel bad. I don't feel bad for me having my own opinion or feeling what I feel. So that's what helps me. It's just like it is what it is. I love you. Cool. Mm, so you got yeah. through those hard times by just focusing on yourself? Yeah, like I, I keep away from people. And I, I step back and I look at, like, do you need to be here? Do you need to be here? Why are you here? And there was a lot of people I had to let go because they had me on a whole different path. Like, how is the, they didn't um, get it. How do you know you're truly healed from something if you don't? Because it sounds like, you know. still like, I'm still growing. I mean, it's only been eight months, about nine. It takes a long time. But it's I say this, I feel way better than what i was feeling before so i know something's happening something right. no, is for sure yeah. and, I, and that's why i say i commend you for even going to the hospital but i say that because i've been hearing this story i mean you talked about this a year ago two years ago and All even my life. That, yeah because i'm an advocate for it but it's like now because of what's going on i can't no forget yeah, the situation like not even that i'm talking but about your feelings and how you get it. through yeah. your feelings and how mm-hmm. how do you heal if you didn't talk about these things Therapy, specifically like i just was hiding it I didn't know I needed, you know how somebody like goes through things and they're like, we don't know that we need healing because we try to duck it, like cover it. I was like, let me pull this bitch out because this is bothering me and this is bothering me. And I got tired of ducking things and hiding it. I was like, I just want to be free from anger. That's where the outbursts come from. That's where me wanting to fight, me wanting to air people out me wanting to just diss people jealousy i've never been jealous of people and i was jealous of people i'm like what is this like this ain't even my flow this ain't my character and it stems from childhood and up like just going through stuff so but you wasn't like a year or two ago you wasn't into that no more you was talking about counseling mm-hmm. you was talking about therapy yeah and, and i was telling people that it's it, it takes time mm-hmm. and that was years ago it takes time because i was off and on with it this is the first time where i've been consistent with mm. it and i'm like okay i like this because at first i started i'm like i don't like this you know me personally and you're supposed to be my therapist and you talking about other stuff in therapy i it was just terrible mm. i was getting the worst therapist and stuff now i got the right things that i need and it's like i enjoy being like this even how i respond to stuff like the old me you asked me i would have been like man i'm out mm. i'm about to leave and i'm about to take my fruit with me no, you can have it. No, <laughs> that's fine. Um, so, question: Do you think like a lot of that times, a lot of those like I guess I don't know, the time, the times where you were getting into things, mm-hmm. was a lot of that because you wasn't ready for the fame? Because fame comes with a lot of responsibilities. This is so crazy. I was just talking about this like literally two hours ago. So Eric Thomas, I had reached out to Eric Thomas. Et fire, mm, fire, fire. I was reading and I told him I said, you know, you've helped me through a lot of like him and Gary. Gary V. Mm. And you helped me through a lot of depression and, and things that I've been going through. I ain't think these people's going to respond. They both responded. And I'm like, okay, cool. So you got any classes I could take? And um, I had, before I spoke to Eric, um, I went on YouTube and it said that the worst thing that could ever happen to you is you think failing is the worst thing. Mm-hmm. Try being a failure because you're scared of success mm. and when i tell you i was working out i literally cried my friend thought i was sweating i was literally crying because i've heard that a lot all my life they're like you know what your problem is you do everything just to steer away from being successful on purpose and you be knowing you wrong like if i have an outburst i know that it's wrong i used to know that it was wrong like oh i'm about to dog this person out or fight and oh i want to be this i want to show people i'm a stripper really i don't have to i'm doing all this stuff doing drugs at the time i don't have to do that but i'm doing it because it'll push everybody away so you can stay away from me and i don't have to deal with the success that i know i deserve and then when i realized that i'm like yo like that's the worst feeling being a failure because you're and it's nobody else it's you and i've always been told it's you that the reason why you're not successful and that was the most that was the most painful thing in the world you know like um, and i don't want to be like that i want to uh <laughs> you know what it remind me of i want to google this real quick so don't think i'm being rude no nah, it's okay uh this is what, what it remind me of you remember um coach carter the the football movie yeah it's a basketball movie but it's okay damn <laughs> so um damn. basically um is a uh it's a a poem mm-hmm. and it's, it's called our deepest fear and I don't know if you, you heard of it before, but I'm going to read it to you. It's just a couple, first couple lines, right? Mm-hmm. And it goes, um, our deepest feel is not that we are powerful beyond measures. 
is that our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measures. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. And um, when you say that, that mm -hmm. reminds me of that because it's not. It's not that we are powerful beyond measure. Mm -hmm. It's not that we can accomplish everything that we it's set like out there to accomplish. It's like you got all these opportunities here. And you're like, which one do you? It's like all the successful things in front of you. Mm -hmm. I've had so many, and it keep happening. That's why I'm like, okay, God, I'm doing this repetitively. Like, keep putting blessings in front of me. You keep on hitting them. Like, why don't you just want to accept it? When you sit there and you see all this success and you're just like, just pick one. I'm going like, to give you something to think about, though. <laughs> you know why I think we um, shy away from it? Personally, and this is my first time ever saying this, um, you know, if you think about anything that's different in the world, right, um, it's like we shy away from anything that's different. Anything that's different than what we usually see, mm -hmm. we don't like it automatically, mm -hmm. like automatically. Yeah. Now think about this. That's true. Just knowing your story, right, and my personal story. Mm -hmm. Your parents wasn't very successful, as in like, mm -hmm. I, well, I don't want to say successful because you measure it by different things, but they wasn't, yeah. they wasn't, um, I don't know, shit. I'm going to say successful for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. your, your parents probably wasn't successful in your eyes. No, to, to me, I was the one that they were like my heroes. For real? Yeah. Like what? But I found the littlest. See, I'm, mm. I'm very weird, I guess, if that's the word. So no, I, mm -hmm. I've always found the most interesting things in the littlest thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, I started playing piano when I was six. My mom couldn't afford classes for me. She couldn't figure out what type of talent this was for a six-year-old to be playing classical music. So she got me these tapes that were for, from Salvation Army, for example, right? And when she got them, I would sit there and listen to them and play and just figure it out. And then I figured it out. And I thought, to me, in my eyes, my mom was like a superhero mm -hmm. because it didn't it didn't matter where they came from, the cassette tapes, but it allowed me to be able to play over six instruments now. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my definition of seeing somebody in a certain light of success was so different from what people, they'll be like, oh, my, my family's rich or she's a doctor. No, my mom was a superhero to me because the, the, the kisses on the forehead or if I fell, like, like I just found happiness in like t totally different things than what people would think. Mm. My dad, like, wanting to be when we got when I got older he would talk to me and he's like you know I always wanted to be around you just certain things and I always thought my dad was like a little superhero too like right. when I would see him he would you know we'd go shopping and get little sneakers and stuff and I'm like oh I'm like the the coolest kid ever you know because I got my dad around so I'm a little different but I mean it's also times where like yeah. and this is what like because we can't like you said like your dad built the the uh the crib for you in his um garage yeah. right so like because you you didn't he was wanna, like you a rebel right, you, you, you don't want to listen to right. me right so that's what he I'm said, saying I love I, you but I'm gonna keep you real close but, but I, not in here I feel like us as a culture yeah. us, we're not used to that love I mean granted like we probably get it now but we're starting mm -hmm. to get it now but because we're not mm -hmm. used to it when we get it it's foreign to us yeah. so because it's so different we don't know how to react when we get the love yeah, that we truly deserve yeah because back then I was like wait what you gonna put me what and, and he, he, that's what I'm trying to say he built a whole apartment for me a whole apartment like furnished everything he said you stay in here and you gonna pay rent and i respected it i didn't understand it too much but when i started i thought back i was like oh my daddy loved me because he really could have just <laughs> left you on a road for, just for sure. in new york and it's cold <laughs> the snow come up to here you couldn't find me <laughs> so, i don't want to be out that's what i mean i think i think because like <laughs> we're so used to like trauma we used to pain to be yeah honest, like we, we was birthed in this country into off, pain into pain you into know what i'm saying so like when we see Absolutely. something that's so different as when we see love it's like sometimes love is like so foreign. different and Very then we have so many different different definitions of it. Like whatever has happened to me, my trauma, you know, I'm a recovering addict for now 11 years. Like mm, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Keep coming back. I, man, when I tell you, <laughs> I just smoke that shit, that shit. But it's it's like I look at all these things that uh, that impact you and can make you into this just evil, horrible person. And it's I made my own definition of love, like. There's a reason why I don't have kids right now. Well, it's also because of a medical issue that I have. But it's just like when I have a kid, these are the things that I'm not going to do. And this is the way that I'm going to show them love. I'm not going to just give them things just because I want them to understand that you got to work hard and, and do these certain things and how love really feels like it shouldn't love should not hurt. And I don't care what nobody says. It, it should it should have its, its disagreements or whatever, but it should never be to the point where now you hate love. Nothing should make you feel like love is impossible. Mm -hmm. I and mean, I've always been, I've called myself a love hoe. <laughs> because yeah. I'm like, I'm a love hoe and I'm not afraid to say it. 
because I enjoy love. I enjoy being that one-on-one with somebody. You do your little private stuff on the side. Cool, like that's what you, what y'all got going on. But love should not feel it's like that. It's actually a word for What is it called? I love, like, what is it like when you um always want to be loved? What the hell is the word? I'm a love hoe. We're going to go with that for right now. I love hoe. But it's something I forgot. And um, I'm not ashamed of it. And it's okay. I think it's fire. So question, like, <laughs> you uh, you said you read you read the Bible often and a yes. lot, right? Um, mm-hmm. What's your favorite scripture? Um, Who? Which one? Um. So the okay, just hear me out. So me. you ever seen? Uh, you ever read the Book of Revelations? I haven't. I haven't read the, the Bible a lot. I never knew it was like that. Like, cause I scatter. What I do is I wake up, put the Bible here, and I'll just flick through and read. Mm. I just so happen to flick it to the end, and it's describing what these you know when God returns basically, mm. and like what the world is and all these the most evilest things that happen it's the whole book explains that that specific and it's just like why does it have to be like the end of and it's not a specific scripture by the way it's the whole book why does it have to be like to the point where it's all this terrible things for people to now it says in the bible like people are on their knees praying to god like why does it have to be like that for you to not understand that this man is here and he's you just got to do right and he's just going to bless you like just do right by him and it's like nobody wanted to do right by god and now all these crazy the way they was explaining how the demons and stuff it's the whole book it's not just one scripture and it shows you like people don't care until they get in bad situations then they want to call on somebody mm-hmm. and this is just with anything in life so my favorite book is revelation the the Revelations, Revelations. because it's just like you really sit back and you, that's how we think in the world we don't call on him until it's bad we need him right and it's, when what it about saying thank bad. you you know what i'm saying you can't just like pop one in and be like i always tell people pray before you pick up your phone mm. i pray before i pick up my phone and i'll be like okay it's money on the line oh, oh i got to breathe i got to ain't lose no fingers like so i just it's crazy because my mom's like she used to do drugs and um yeah it was wild because just everything mm, i'm sorry i just so I, I got a um uh, root canal yesterday it's okay i've had that i have two root canals mm-hmm. on this side too on this side had this tooth pulled down because the bone went through it and that then, was because of the uh, fight with your, your ex when the, yeah when but then i tooth. had also i was having problems when i was a kid when i fell in the pool and it, it, it got chipped but it wasn't as effective till then mm. when that happened so i've had the big teeth the small teeth the one yeah. tooth missing, you know, a little that mean hurt. that it be, yeah, it's But terrible. I say to say just in case I, like, stop because, it's like, okay. sometimes I, like, clamp it, with my teeth because yeah. I just got it done. But it's anyway. all right. If it make you feel any better, I'm about to go get my last tooth put in. You know how they put the meme, like, it's always a bad bitch and she got a side, side tooth, tooth missing? missing. <laughs> yeah, it's there. It should look good, though. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just got one more to go. No, nah, wait. How long, um... Because I've been talking about Bernays before I go into what I was about to say. How long does it last? I thought like... Forever. For real? Mm-hmm. I've been getting different signals. I've been hearing Listen, somebody I had say the big 15 teeth. years. I had the Steve Harvey's. No offense to Steve, but I had them too. You know what I'm saying? I had all types of But you've been having... You had these for a long... Man, for, no. I went through four different surgeries. For real? For the veneers? Because my teeth wouldn't hold. It wouldn't hold the bridge because there's no... I have no bones. So like if you had ice cream right now, I could just put my, my teeth into it and just sit there and let it sit. Because I have no nerve. Mm. My nerve was shifted. So okay, okay. Damn fruit. No, nah, because right. I was thinking about that. But anyway, um, yep. I was saying my mom. She used to she used to do drugs really heavy, and she used to pray. She used to pray while like in the kitchen doing her thing. So like, that's what got me like really on heavy on it. My favorite scripture is um Romans eight eighteen. Yeah. So what Romans eight eighteen says is that um uh shit. I'm gonna just pull it up. Wait a minute. I ain't never. How are you gonna curse and then pull up Romans? Wait, what you mean? Don't nah. bring me in your mess when we get to heaven trying to get the wind. Nah, nah. So that's the one person. That's the one thing. I'm, I'm probably like, uh, I'm not. A, I wouldn't say. Well, I'm very spiritual, but like, I'm like. You can't say shit and then say. Why can't I'm you? just repeating what he said. You can so don't put me in his. Bed. I thank God all the time. I thank God. I shit. I be like, that's my dog. I'm like. Yo, you really like, yeah, like all the time. That's so my relationship right now, with God. Abigail gonna be like, go ahead and go on balance. No, nah, that's 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 my yeah. relationship with God. We all got our different relationships with God. Me and you God. gonna be flying around with one damn wing in heaven because you want to say shit before talking about Romans. No, nah, that's my dog, man. Man, come on. No, nah, that's my dog. So basically, Romans eight eighteen says, I consider our present sufferings are not even worth comparing to the glory that's going to be revealed in us and ahead of us. That's true. And basically, what it means is like, you know, all the shit we go through. <laughs> all the things we going through, right? <laughs> the, the problems, the problems that's on our shoulders, the burdens that's on our shoulders, it's not even that pain can't even be compared to the glory, to the happiness that you're gonna feel on the other side of that pain. 
That you know what? When you was asking me about my mom, that that's how I look at stuff. Mm. I it's okay to trick yourself. So hear me out. I'll trick myself into believing that everything, and not so much of tricking, but tell myself it's gonna be alright even when it's not it, when it's at its worst. That's how I'm able to be like, it's okay. I love this person, or it's okay because I just know, and it's like manifesting, like. I'm not trying to see nothing else like negative. Like, so it's kind of like that. And I get it, right? I think I'm the same way, but you know, like, you know, therapy teaches us different things. And I feel like what Mm -hmm. therapy taught me was we can't really get over it until we get through it. Deal with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we can be like, we're going to be dope and it's going to be great, but we got to deal with Mm -hmm. it. And that's the hardest part to do is to to deal with it and reflect on it. That's why I'm trying to pull it out. Nobody don't want to accept it. Well, maybe because I've already did it Mm -hmm. with when I was in a hospital. So it's like, my therapist told me once you go through it, so I've went through it already, do not go back mm. and do it. So that's where okay. it went to when you was asking me why you don't want to ask certain things and stuff. I told them the same thing because I wasn't doing them for a, a while. I think this is my second interview mm. because I just went cold on them. Like Thank I didn't you again. Do I'm gonna say anything. Gonna keep like I was just like, I even hit up my, this is my baby, Angelie. I just asked her recently. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. She's like, Okay, <laughs> because I was afraid to talk about things. So, and he was like, "Just remember, don't go backwards." And I'm like, "You know what? That's do you think true. speaking? I'm not go do you think speaking on those things and speaking how you got through them things is going backwards? Speaking, uh, speaking the right way. You don't have to just be so about everyone else. It needs to be focused on you. Mm. So I'm learning how to do that so that I could be a woman to talk about this because men, women, boys, and girls go through that. Like they go through that trauma, like from 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 childhood, like whatever it is. And I want to be, I just want to say the proper things, not just for excitements or clicks or likes, but something that's gonna change somebody and help them like grow. Mm. You know, so that's probably the space I'm in. I went through it, so now it's just like, all right, let's see how this goes now. That's no, what it is. Sure. So I be cautious of what I say and how I say it with anything, music, anything, like because I don't want it to come out. Because you can say the wrong thing and then be like. You meant this. I'm like, no, I didn't mean that. This is how I feel. And that's what it is. So Let me ask you this, yeah. though. Going through so much. Right? <laughs> Why do I feel like when you go like this, you're like. No, 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 no. Going through so much because you've been <laughs> through so much. And I feel like you were young, so young on television. You had so much fame. You still have so much fame. You and went I through like 40, like Went through like 41 pages, Instagram pages and things 43. like that. 43 at this point. But um, I say that to say, <laughs> do you think you've been through so much? That you're kind of sca- like you're kind of um, sheltered and scared to speak on the things because you don't want to revisit those times where people were so judgmental. No, nope, I just tell people go back on Google and go find it. It's it, you know what it is. I I have so much great that's happening now that I don't. I be wanting to use that. I be mm. wanting to use the time for that mm. instead of that. So it's not that I'm hiding. It's just like I got so much other stuff that I be wanting to show y'all. Mm. And it's just like, but I don't remember the old person. I just be like, just go Google it at this mm. point because I'm moving forward. And that that's what they teach me in therapy because everybody's therapy is different. They're like with you specifically. You you can't backtrack. Like once you get over it, leave it alone because mm. that's kind of how I guess PTSD works. Damn, that's crazy because yeah. I, 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 I definitely understand. It's like it's, it's like a trigger. Like For it's, sure. And then you got to like, so you're not really over it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, all right. So when people ask me, it's not that I don't want to talk about anything that's happened to me. It's just like I replace it with the happy things that's happened. And even the shelter thing is not because I don't want to be around people. It's really because where to check it. Mm. I need a host and I need, if it's not about money. <laughs> I'm not tooting and booting it for summer girl. I'm sorry, y'all do not want to use me as your hot girl summer. How was it? Um, how was that affecting the music? You know what I'm saying how everything that you feeling inside. Like- I'm a Gemini. I'm gonna get happy, sad. Oh, I'm gonna still do the music. I'm a. It nothing's changed. It just makes me. It makes me more driven. Mm. It. I used to be scared of like what I was telling you, like of success. Now it's just like I want it. Like what's up? Where is it? Um, I get more um feeling actually out of my music like it's different now it's like oh this is a vibe i can go into a heartbreak song and then i can go over to a hurt a a, 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 a loving song and leave out and not feel no type of way because i'm making the music not just for me for others to love mm-hmm. so it's like a growing process it's no, a lot sure. <laughs> it's a lot no it's definitely a growing Ooh, process it's a lot. You, um <laughs> what do you if you had to um put a label on what would you call this 
this exact moment of your career or your life right now? What would you call it? Like if you had to give it a name. Okay, so peep this. I had um, a condo, and I, this is gonna explain it. I had a condo um, in Bucket that mm -hmm. was forty five hundred dollars. Freaking a month, right? You want some water, please. I'm sorry. And um, I was like, you want some water? Oh, you got some. Mm -hmm. I got some. And I was just like, you know what? I I want to downsize. I wanted a G wagon. I didn't want to get it. And then I said, I don't want to do a lot of things. I don't want to buy material things or whatever. I'm going to get a loft and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to work and I'm going to build up, you know, the Lash Company. I'm going to build up my music. I'm going to get it and I'm going to feel like I'm saving money. I'm not living above my means. And where I am at right now, not that I'm poor, I'm broke or anything. It's like, this is my, I'm at the place where it's like grind mode and it's, it's going to happen. So like you I'm call at this that, moment grind mode? That the moment where it's, you don't know when it's gonna happen, but it's soon. Like, yeah, you about to take off mm -hmm. if you just—that's where I'm at. It's like right there. But come on, at talk, that moment, like, come on, man. What do you mean? Talk. Listen. <laughs> talk to me because maybe because you already had a lot of success before, right? But when mm -hmm. you think about that, because I had a conversation with um my friends about this all the time, and I say, you know what? I don't ever want to come off as ungrateful because I'm appreciative of everything that's mm -hmm. going well in my life. But I feel like I'm like at that point right before it becomes it becomes really big or what I what what I've been dreaming for. That's what I be feeling. For me, sometimes it's is 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 frustrating and it's um it gives me anxiety because it's like I know I'm right there and it's just like when, 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 when. That's the Eric thing that I was talking about. Mm. They doing that success thing again. It's mm. like you're like having anxiety. I don't have it no more. Mm. So I had that where I'm like scared of success. And you the reason why. And now it's just like, fuck that. Like, I deserve this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in that mode. Like, I deserve it. And I know it's about to happen. I downsize things. I remember my, I call her my second mom, Deborah Annie. Um, she was like, you know what your problem be? You said the same thing. You're scared of success. She's like, when you get out your own way, you're going to feel it. And you're going to be like, I'm on go mode. And that's where I'm at. I done went through all this shit to the point it's like, I downsized, I stopped stripping because they said, oh, you can't strip and sing the way you sing. I, I sacrificed OnlyFans, make it 20,000 a week to the point where it's just like, oh, you gonna get this damn onesie with me twerking to a Barney song for all I know. You gonna pay or you not? I, I covered myself. Mm. I switched it over to selling my BTS and my music videos. Like I changed, not for others to like, but because I wanted to do these things because I know that it's gonna get me to the next level. So when you kind of not sacrifice, but like give away things that you really don't need, that's not gonna level you. It's like you just sit now and you just be patient. No, nah, fuck. And it's like that's where I'm at. So it's kind of like maybe shocking to people. Like, damn, you don't be doing too much. And I'm like, nah, cause something, something about to happen. It's too much going on. Mm -hmm. In a good way, it's too many. Good, it's too. It's too much. Like it's a feature here. Last night I thought I was going to a dang on studio session. But this, this is what I mean. Like, when you start seeing these things, you just be like, yeah, let me keep doing the same schedule I'm doing because it's working. I'm sitting in the studio. I'm supposed to just have a regular studio session. CeeLo Green comes in. Mm. And it just be happening like that. And I'm like, same with the uh, don't know NBA much Young about me. Yes. Right? Yeah. I just, it just happens. And I'm like, something got to give. It's not happening like that for no reason. No, facts. So now it's like, now that I'm, the only thing I'm thankful for is my mental space. Because mm -hmm. if my mental space was how it was before, even this wouldn't have happened like the interview like i mm. i just, i feel it so why would you want to shift it don't be afraid of it like i don't want to be afraid of success no more no nah, for sure you talk yeah. about miss deb how is she she's wonderful mm. every day that's probably her text would be is she nope, still that's not her today. she's still your she was a manager right that or, lady ain't going nowhere she don't even need that title anymore i just be like that's my second mom yo, how is it working with like a, like she's a legend yo how people is it working ask with so that? look like, like that's crazy they be like you don't be scared of i'm like yo be it, let me tell you our relationship all right so deb when i be calling her she be in her shower mm. Just shower, like, what's up? What you doing? And I'm like, yo. She's so raw, bro. But sometimes I'll be naked Crazy. trying to get dressed. And she'll be like, nobody don't want to see your ass. I'm like, I don't care. And it's just, it's genuine. It's, it's funny as hell. We was on um, Growing Up in Hip Hop, and it was they was asking us, what did we want to film? Deb calls me, and I'm thinking she, I did not expect her to ask you, because this shit was funny. I said, what you want to do for this next episode? She said, a colonic. I said, what the fuck is that? She's like, let's do one together. I said, what the fuck? Let me Google what is it. that? <laughs> I said, you want me to do what? 
man, the TV state, the, the people was like, yeah, we should do that. I'm like, what the hell is a colonic cleanse or col- colon, whatever? It's is when you, you lay down, down oh, shit. next to each other, spread your butt cheeks, it's and put something up in there. That's ridiculous. I, about some, I heard about girls sitting about down some, and doing it. We should do this together. I'm not. I'm not looking at you while they sucking shit. I'm a butt damn. But this is our relationship. And she start cracking her legs. She said, "I'm a pitch it to him. I'll call you back." I'm like, "What the fuck?" Mm-mm-mm. And I, it's it's. I love our relationship. People think that we we're not close. We call each other almost every day. That's so fire, bro. And I needed that sometimes when I, you know, just the situations with what we were talking about. Like, I be needing that love. Like, she funny as hell. That yeah. lady is funny. Does she she play a big role in, like, getting your features and stuff or not? Because she's so connected. So way. everybody has their own, uh, like, job that they do. For s- some reason, me DMing, saying, hi, I'm Johnny. I play in sp- six instruments and sing. It works. Has got me all of my features. The only one I think it was um, was NBA and Trina because I used to dance for Trina and I asked for a feature. She's like, it's not time. And then mm. six years, like, well, it hasn't been eight years. It's been a while since I danced. It don't count when I'm at home. Mind your business. <laughs> Whew, I got so many videos to post of me falling off the post. First of all, somebody should have screwed the shit in my damn wall the right way. Anyway, I'm a big bitch. I don't know what happened. I fell. I'll show you the video later. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's just more of a... Um, Damn it, I forgot what I was talking about. We're talking about uh, you getting features, you were saying? Yeah, Trina, it, the, Trina, and then years later, we ended up doing a feature, so everybody has their own thing. They'll tell you, like, she's good at that shit. Like, the features, it just be happening. I hit up Boosie, he was like, sure. And I'm like, okay. And Ali Chopper, it was when he was, like, 16, and it just didn't work. And his dad was like, it's going to happen. That song and fire, he went through, he went through, like, his, like, that, that the, um, spiritual thing. And his label DM'd me and was like, uh, and Ali, once you hit him up, I'm like, okay. He's like, I owe you a record. And I'm like, really? That's hard. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. And I he got... slid on that record. That's Man, he told me he only had two hours to film for the music video. And he's seen how I was just rushing his stuff. The boy stayed for like six hours. Damn, that's hard. Just kicking it. Just cool. Just cool people. And it's just, that's all I be wanting is just people to take a, just take a minute or two just to hear the, once you hear me sing, it's it's always like that. They just be like, "No, you can sing your ass off." Shit like, is crazy. What <laughs> kind of shit is? Yo, that is. And wild. then they be like, "You play yeah. instruments too?" I'm like, "Yeah, want to see?" And I start playing. I'm doing Paramore drum line and shit, and they're like, "Huh?" And I feel like God kind of did it. Like, Wait, so he's who? just like, you know what? She's crazy, but let Abigail sprinkle some talent on her. She'll be fine. Go ahead, drop who, her. In who's her. your favorite? <laughs> um, your favorite artist? Brandy. Or not? Not right now. Overall, like all together, like, Brandy. For real, it's the it's the riffs. Damn. Um, Tracy Chapman, Billy Holiday. I like Paramore. I like Bleak One Eighty Two. Um, Dolly Parton, Christina Aguilera. I like Britney Spears because of the entertainment. Like it's just people have different things. Share Shade because it, she's just one of a kind. She went missing for ten years, came back and sold a million copies. That's the type of artist you want to be. Where you could just kick back and be like, you know what? Bam, disappear. Mm. Um, I don't want to be like the undercard. I'm gonna actually want to be up in y'all face because I owe y'all asses. Um, but <laughs> um, people like I just have different varieties of artists. I like Kiss. I like Queens. Mm. You know, I like I like cadences. I I hear by ear with music with the six instruments I play. So I'll listen for the sound. Like if we're talking, I could tell by how you sound, your tempo and your 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 level. Like they're mad. So when you say like, it's, it's crazy, right? Because you ain't named out of everybody you name. You ain't named, you ain't named the person I thought she was. More Hill, named. I like to Mary J. Bly. Not even that. When you say you play six different instruments, Alicia the first Keys. thing I think of is Prince. Because everybody's been like, you're like a mini me Prince. Yeah, and I'm like, like that's the first person I think of, like, because he played. I was kind of a Michael feet. Jackson like lover growing okay, up because okay. I had the same last name. So I just told people that that was my cousin. Mind your business. I was a kid, so I get an excuse for saying that. All right, so and he's still my cousin. Now mm. what? So <laughs> and then I got the 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 hang of um, Prince, and I was just like, wow. Stevie J is the one that told me I remind him of a Baby mm. Prince because he plays instruments, and then Zaytoven, like Zaytoven, so crazy. Zay, man, right. What? But crazy. honestly, to be honest, I so this is before my time. I didn't know until I started doing my research. Look at you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't know <laughs> until I I was doing my research, and. 
Stevie J got hits. Man, what? Bro. You know who else is crazy? That I, I mean, I've always I've liked her, liked her voice. She's a like cool, super cool. Invited me to her listening party. Mooney Long. Oh, that's the um. You, Why I was, I was, is yeah, her girl. track sheet so damn long? Rihanna, really? Mariah Carey. Oh, she wrote Beyonce. for all these people. What? Damn. What? That track list is so disrespectful. Who she wrote? For, who she? What song did she write that I probably didn't know about? It's like the hit songs that Rihanna had. Like the was it Disturbia or like it was fuck? like when she had the red hair, when <laughs> yeah, she had the short damn. hair with Drake. It was like those type of records. I'm sitting here like that's why she said in the interview she was like I'm tired of writing for people and I was like damn why she said that damn because they the songs that she was probably writing was supposed to be like. So, but I do that. Somebody else, Sony Digital, just brought it up. My label, they was like, you know what? It'd be fire. Why don't you start writing? And I'm like, and then my first one, I wrote for Macy Gray. Damn, that's fire. Somebody said for me to write, and I started writing. I didn't got. I didn't land at a damn legend. That's I hard. co-wrote with her. That's Yo, you crazy. know, it's crazy because I know everybody <laughs> was surprised or shocked that the little Yachty. Uh, right in the city girls. Um, Cause you gotta think about it. Men be watching when we do ratchet stuff, and that's what I was saying. Men I'll, be seeing that and they love it. I would never be shocked after I heard Sean Garrett wrote um, Soldier. What Sean Garrett's fire, man, fire. Lil Yachty. I'm not gonna lie. When me and Juicy Fruit did a record, my label is ran by a guy named Nove. He looked at me, and it was a pain song. He looked at me, and he was like, "Say this." And I was like, "I don't want to say that because that's kind of out of pocket." He said, "But you went through it." I sung it, and then when they heard the the outcome of it, they was damn near in tears. And I was just like, people don't understand. Like men watch stuff; they just don't say nothing because y'all don't. Y'all first thing y'all want to do is call a man gay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to, but that check in gay. That's actually the check, check is gay. Is very... It's real happy. It's real gay. <laughs> now you call me gay all you want to, and that's how little Yachty was looking at it. Like these men that write these records, we they be listening to us. They watch everything. I, my brother mimics me and be like, this is what y'all be doing. I'm like, you watch that? And they're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, of course, when I have my writers, majority are men. Mm-hmm. Majority of my writers that write with me are men because I be wanting to talk like how y'all talk. Have me talk. Have me sing like what y'all be singing and what y'all feel. Like, this is what I feel, but I want to talk this because it attracts. Like, why would she sing that? Why would she say that? You know what was you so know? fire? I felt like um, you had posted this picture. Oh, man. And um, I don't know. It was, it was a picture. Like, it was attractive. It, Which picture was it? I don't know. I think you had blonde hair or whatever. And I'm weird, too. So, like, the <laughs> caption, what I thought was fire was the caption was, like, go check out all my music on, um, uh, go check out God my music ass. on all, all social media. God damn. <laughs> Boy, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to advertise. Yo, you know who I like? Prima Donna. It'll be a beastie argument. It ain't got nothing to do with Prima Donna. Prima Donna up under there like, yeah, so this is a perfect time for y'all to tell, to me to tell y'all it's 30% off on my cooking books. And all. And I said, you know what? I think she got something there. Let me start. So now when they be posted to be on social media, I'm like, yeah, so you can check out. So I said, I'm about to lure their ass in nah, <laughs> with a cute fine. picture. I, when like, I seen check it, I was like, what the fuck? And I used to think like, damn, Lizzo plays flute. She twerks. You want to play the piano and twerk? Let me yeah, play yeah, yeah. piano and twerk. Because you can only be one person. It's only one Lizzo. It's only one Johnny. But if I tweak this and switch the instrument, technically that's a whole new vibe. Because she's always going to be the girl that twerks and plays and floats and sings and mm-hmm. phenomenal. And I'm always going to be the first girl. And my mom always told me be first. Mm-hmm. I'll never be last. Be first. Because they always going to remember the person that started it first. For sure. But when I start playing that piano and twerk, I was like. But let's, let's not act like. It's nothing new under the sun, though. <laughs> Everything is, like, re- recycled at some type uh-huh. of way. Somebody done did it. Somebody. We just didn't see it yet, but somebody did a little. little. How is how, how do you think your music <laughs> career is going right now? Way better mm-hmm. than what it was before. I could get nobody to jump on. Nothing. Like, now it's just, like, way easier. Do you They're feel like, like you get the, the recognition you deserve? I never look at that. I've never really even thought about it. Because mm-hmm. you know how people be like, oh, she's not successful. Yeah, I'm like, or or if someone says, oh, they're not there yet. And I'm like, what's your definition of there? Because if a person can't even get a feature from somebody that you couldn't get from, or if I got something for free that you have to pay for, that's successful. And so, I think people label what success is, and then they get depressed because it's not standard mm-hmm. to what this person thinks success is mm-hmm. but to me the shit that i like i said i came from the hood the shit that i've been through i'm doing pretty good i just got to keep on going all it takes is one song mm-hmm. and after that everything you do they love so success aside right because we know success can look different yeah. for different people right 
you said that you're right before you get there. So mm-hmm. what is there for you? What is what is there? Like, what does that mean? It's, it's I don't know how to say it as a, like an artist. It's a feeling. Mm. It's like, all right, so I could be talking to you right now. And I'm like, I'm still grind mode. And then I could walk out and go home and I get a call be like, RCA wants to give you 30 million. So 30 million by RCA is there for you. But it's not that. I'm not thinking about the 30 million. I'm thinking about, okay, it's 30 million. Market this, open up businesses, do this. What can we expand to do the music? Like I'm thinking in a different type of mode. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like now I could do this. I can now do my own tour and open up and have women that are upcoming that is, I was going through that. They need that next level and I might be their next level. Like I'm one of them people. I'm not thinking about, oh my God, it's a lot of money. It's a big label. I'm thinking about how I could triple that, get y'all ass out the way. Cause every time when a, when a label signs you, that's a loan. Mm-hmm. So let me get you up out the way. Let me double, triple this 30 million you gave me. Get your ass out the way. And now have other endorsements and stuff where I could just be like, you know what? That's the next level for me. Like, and I'm doing it by little. For example, these lashes, for example. I have 100 I brought, right? And it's $2.22. That means it's $222. And the profit would be 2,500. Take away 222 is $2,228. You take that and then you... It's like you keep on investing in yourself. You know what I'm saying? And it started in my little, little loft that got this little space with just the boxes of lashes. You keep on going with something. Then you get to a warehouse and you look back. It's not the, it's not that I wasn't successful when I had the hundred boxes. I was always successful because I even had the box itself. It's, It's just having it there. It's just now it's on a different level. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's always going to be success when you start something out, music, whatever it is. It's just going and making it bigger. That's what makes it feel like you're going to the next level. But it's really always been big because you believed in it in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's just to to, to society, oh, it's small because you only got a couple people buying it. Does that make sense? So that's what I mean, my next level. I've always been successful. You come out the womb successful. I always tell people, ain't no such thing as famous. I don't think I'm famous. I don't think I'm a celebrity. I just think I'm a bomb-ass fucking entertainer. Mm-hmm. Well, you are yeah, a I'm celebrity. Saying. But like, we're not some, about to yeah. downplay so that I, at no, all. No, but I don't, I because I don't know the definition. Because shit, nowadays it's like shit. I could, I could sit and drink all these Bel Airs and then go viral because I drunk all of them and then walk outside and skate backwards and do backflips and now I'm viral. I'm known as the girl that can do all that. Now you're famous. Mm. You, you people call each other icons and they don't know the definition of it because they feel that they're icons. So would you tell somebody they're not an icon because you don't think they are? So that's what I mean by like people, the play words, words is words. Mm. Like it's all in what you put the work in. Like So that's what I mean when I say the next level. I'm thinking of what can I do to make something even bigger? No, Because yeah. right, I right. already feel I'm successful. I felt successful when I did my first little talent show and got booted, got them, um, uh, uh, goddamn Apollo. Mm. I got booed because I looked like an old, like a, a adult. I was thicker. And they brought me back. I was like, as a kid, you can't boo kids. And I felt like shit. Mm. And I went back and I kept going, but I was successful because I even got through the damn line. Some of y'all could. Facts. So you just gotta, it's like a mind you, thing. You and know you know what's what funny? Like, I feel like even even nowadays, I feel like success, <laughs> it's I feel so like social like, media plays a big part in what we didn't success have social media. like. Man. Cause you boy, when I tell you, buy twenty dollars, pay somebody twenty dollars, get a million damn followers. Everybody think you just big as hell. Facts. It's nothing but a damn bunch of bo- bots box and goddamn Korea, Africa, Zimbabwe, West bubble fucking everything. Facts. Just like, and you don't even know them people be like. But you know what happens? You take your ass back home. You got all these people fake liking your shit mm-hmm. and people wanting to fuck with you. But then in, in reality, you in somebody's basement, ain't got no bed. You depressed. Damn, they want to kill your damn self. You have a drinking problem. You don't got the favorite job that you want, but you're going to go ahead and give that $20 again and make it do a million again mm-hmm. because you like the feeling of being feeling, feeling like you accept it. Mm-hmm. When people probably would have accepted you, like let's say if it was an artist that was doing it, you trying to rent out cars and shit to make your freestyles when they would have respected you if they would have just seen you with your, your hole in your shirt in a Honda, but you smashing. They would have respected that more, but you didn't want that because you felt like they were going to tear you down. So you want to build this buy fake chains in the fucking flea market and shit and look all popping and shit. Don't put no money to your marketing, but you're going to get at $20 to make this image look good. And you take all that off. You're still fucking miserable. That's true. But we can't we can't ignore social media sucks. We can't. It does. We It does. <laughs> but that's why I want to have this conversation about social media, because as much as except as much as social media suck, we can't ignore the the help that it brings us. 
we got whole we got whole jobs on social media. Exactly. Now. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? I got a job lot, on we can it. make a lot of money okay. from social media. So we so yeah, it does. It is negative, but yeah. it has a lot of positives as well. Yeah. And we can't ignore the, That's the true. we can't ignore the 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 importance of your image. But people overlook they want the negative so bad that they don't even see the things that's so successful. And mm. I got trapped in that for a minute too, just wanting to be accepted. I'm like, fuck that. And I was gonna I, I wanted to go there. Get we, that. We, we we talking about so much and I think it's dope and so many people can learn from this. Yeah. It was a point where you like kinda like took a hiatus and people mm. thought you was missing, right? Yeah, I was missing but from just, ass. Yeah, but you just needed <laughs> some time. I need space. <laughs> How much pressure is it how much pressure does social media play on it when it comes to like yo? Yeah, own like people telling that you wrong and you wrong for going missing and pretending like you did. How are you gonna tell me I pretended to be something? How are you gonna tell me I pretended to 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 want to die? Niggas wanted to die, mm. and then when we say that, then we wrong for that too. It's like nothing is nothing makes y'all happy, and I ain't about to be one of person try to please y'all motherfuckers. When you still live in your mama basement, when you still trying to figure out your life, when you upset about your life, so you want to make somebody else feel bad, and then you got the nerve to say you're a fan of mine, but mm. you down in me for taking a break. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then when I went back, I said I feel like the only people that I owe an apology to is the people that genuinely do love me and support me, and and understand that I'm human. If I take a break, you better be lucky that I took a break and not be up there with baby Jesus. Like, mm -hmm. let's keep it real. But then when I'm blunt like that, it's like, damn. Like, yeah, since you wanted to know so bad, now you feel bad. So which one do you want? Do you really want to know the truth or do you want me to just sugarcoat it? Like, which one do you want? I'm going to give what makes me happy and I'm going to go missing because I need to. And I need to take a break before y'all don't see no pictures getting loaded the fuck up. And you just ain't got nothing but memories. And that's that's that that goes back to you checking your damn self. Like, who are you doing this for? Who, or who are you trying to make happy? Them or yourself? Because making somebody else happy, your ass gonna end up done for. And that's mm -hmm. what I was trying to do, trying to make everybody else happy. So when I got back on, I was on some like, fuck it type of attitude. It is what it is. I ain't do no interviews on purpose, no nothing. You see me out and you see me cool, like. And it works for me because it, it gave me my sanity. Some people didn't like me no more. Some people loved me even more, and that's okay. But how did you get to that point? Because I feel like getting to that point of being able to disappear and not care about. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I don't know the entire situation. I just heard about yeah. it, right? So was it that you just took your space and people assumed things, or was it that no? But something... my friends were looking for me, and mm -hmm. so it concerned them. They were like, and then somebody that wasn't even my close, immediate people had a nerve to say, oh, she's lying, and me and him got into it, and I won't even say his name, it's just he he knew he was wrong because he apologized. I said, yeah, that's nice to apologize to me in private. What about publicly? Mm. Because you made people think that because of what I was going through that I was just full of shit, not knowing that I'm spiraling. Like, mm. my grandmother was everything to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through that. I'm going through all types of stuff, going through wanting to relapse. You don't know what I'm feeling. You don't, nobody knows what it feels like to have them final moments where you're like, it's either I'm going off myself or am I going to stick this shit in, get help, and do right. I was on the borderline of both. Mm. Why, if you know you're not close to me, why would you go out to the media knowing that you're somebody that they look up, look, look up to? So they're going to believe whatever, and I'm missing supposedly still, and now I got to go back out of my hiatus to explain because I'm being bullied about me taking a break. But if I didn't take the break and I, you know, croaked over and left Earth, then y'all would have more to talk about. Why didn't nobody go and seek? It's like nothing makes y'all happy. Motherfucker, I ain't coming here to make y'all happy. I came in here to be successful. You love me, you gonna love me. You don't like me, I'm okay with that. And it took me a while because I used to be like, I want people to love me, love me, love me, like me, accept me. Fuck that. I don't care. You know who who need to accept me? The one that's about to give me that check. Mm. The one that's about to do that contract for me. The one that's about to accept me for who I am and want me to grow and coach me. If you're not doing none of that, you're just another person. You're just another body. And I had to really, it took me a while. Like, this stuff that I'm saying now, you cannot catch me saying this years ago. You would never. Mm. I be wanting to curse out everybody. I be wanting to point at everybody. It's your fault. I, ain't nobody fault. Like, you, you either like it or you don't. But how much did social media play in, like... It wasn't even social media. It was close people. Wow. That's the that's the bad damn. part. It wasn't even damn social media. Damn, that's crazy. That You would always think it's, like, social media. Nah, it was the close people to me that was doing it. And so by the time I got on social media with people doing stuff, that didn't even affect me. I was just like... Damn, talk, 
Speaking of that, like, right? Y'all don't even know. It's the family and friends doing crazy shit to me. It's not y'all. And speaking of that, right? <laughs> I feel like you were in, so, again, you were so young. Well, mm-hmm. you like, what, 20s when you was doing Love and Hip Hop? still 20. Yeah, you, you, you were so young, right? And I speak about that. Like, just you. Speak about the perception of this television things and things. You being a superstar versus the reality of you being in it and you seeing how people really play, how people really do scripts or however they do in a loving I've never hip-hop. done script for that. Yeah, yeah, I know you haven't, but, but like, I'm pretty sure I had to come to some type of surprise that like see how it was in it. You th- you see it, like we see girls fighting on TV and we think, oh shit, that's, I don't know, people think it's yeah. dope and some people think you can get famous from it. Shit, we see Cardi B. We and see it, the- don't, it don't even be that because even with Cardi, we, we was talking, she's like, God, just bust that window. And then when I seen the intro, she did it. I was like, bro, just, right. just but when listen, I, say Cardi just, B, I said, listen to them and you'll be fine. We and see she the, did. We see I the did. superstar story though. That's yeah. what I mean. We see the superstar story of uh, Jocelyn. Yeah, they had they mm-hmm. things, they had that past, but we see the superstar story of it. But being in it, how but the was reason that? why, like people like me or her or Jocelyn and and Cardi, the reason why I'm successful because we were unapologetic. You get mm. what you get. This is what I'm going through. When I when I was on Love and Hip Hop, I was on the worst type of drugs ever. Like on top of that, I was drinking. They didn't force it. They didn't. They were just like I said. If you're gonna film something, you better film it. Because I'm not doing action. I'm not doing, and that's what made me great for TV. But really, it was me fighting my own demons and stuff, and people didn't see that. They just seen, girl, they got a fat ass. They could sing here and there. Yeah, yeah, but she crazy. Like, and people love that. So I grew a fan base accidentally by just being myself at the time of who I was. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't nobody provoking me, nobody pushing me. It was just my real life that people just happened to be interested in. I was giving them what it was, and they were like, like with the reunion I was just like yo they said you can't fight her right now we don't got the cameras I said well I feel bad for you honey you got an iPhone and I went off I went to go fight like I've never been the person like wait for a camera wait for this to get some views or whatever no it was what it was and then I look back at it and I'm like damn do you feel like like, I I always say this like I feel like the same the same reason people love you they hate you for the same exact reason like they they hate you for the same reason they love you it's like damn you don't want to see me grow do you think? Do you think? Um, do you ever feel like you was blackballed by? I don't believe in that word. Mm. Um, you know what? At one point, I felt it, and I was like, "Man, it's some bullshit. Ain't no way in hell." Because <laughs> it's just me psyching myself, like, "Ain't no way in hell." And I kept working. I'm like, "Yeah, I definitely don't believe in blackball. All the stuff that people should be blackballed for." It's like the only thing that you could blackball yourself is if you do something that's just out of pocket, like something with children. Like, I'm not fucking with you. I don't care if you're my favorite artist. You do something like that, it's a wrap because mm-hmm. of my history. It's something that you have to do crazy for you to be completely blackballed. But people don't care now. People are so careless and don't even respect their own elders. They don't respect a lot of shit. They don't respect their OGs. People just, like, they don't care. So it's just like blackball is just like, what's that? Mm. Like, what is that? Like a ball that's black? Or mm-hmm. Like, they don't know. They what don't... do you think that people intentionally not giving you opportunities because of your past no mm. uh-uh nope <laughs> not at all um because opportunities that i'd be wanting i get them and i just be sitting back there's always uh, this is very very crazy to say but i just believe it there's always someone whatever position lawyer doctor whatever you want to be there's always somebody that is going to give a chance uh, give you a chance and this is the crazy part the person that gives you a chance can even be yourself. Mm-hmm. That's fine. So, and I people like don't, they overlook it. They're like, I want a chance from everybody else. Mm. I think gonna somebody going to give me a chance. And then they don't even realize the chance might be your ass. Like, it's you that needs to give yourself a chance. So, I always, it's always something that's going to happen. Something going to happen. Facts. And I gave myself a chance. I start. I said, you know what? Let me start putting myself together. I gave my, my myself a chance so that now people would want to so it's like oh it's a double whammy i didn't give myself a chance so now i got I, I place myself where i can get more opportunities so we in this healing mode yeah speaking healing right and you had a lot of <laughs> quote unquote beefs back in the day well my lips dry as hell you want some more water you want, you want, i had that fenty no the fenty not dry don't try to finesse my words my boy <laughs> uh 
It's just, you know, I've been talking a lot. You what know kind I mean? of bag that is? That's nice. Boy, that's a $20 bag. Oh, it look nice. I thought well, it was thank some... Thank you. Some, I've been called? telling people it's 2000 so they can leave me fucking alone. Okay. And but no, nah, do you... Trying to take would you, stack, would, you, would you go back and talk to all the people that, like, I don't know, you got into a wood and, like, have a I piece? I did. Mm, piece it up? And I pieced it up with everybody. Mm. It really was me. I was just like, yo, I was, in, I was tweeting. How like, did that happen? Like, how, how did you I piece it up? I DM'd them. It was like I DM'd... <laughs> I was like, hey, yo, man, before you block me... You didn't want to say something. I went on fake pages. I was like, hey, man, <laughs> let me talk to you real quick. Johnny, how the hell you? I blocked you. I know. But anyway, I made this page. I gave a lady $20. She put a million followers on it. She just see it on purpose. I want to tell you I'm sorry. <laughs> I just was literally DMing everybody I had a problem with. Damn. Who was the last person that you DMed to piece it up with? Lyra Galore. Damn. Was my last person. And it was so crazy because she's like, We've always been friends. You know, we was all, around this time, it was me, Miracle Wise, it was Malai Michelle, just Britney, all the Houston girls. It was like, remember when strippers was like the big, we were like statues. Niggas had statues of us in the strip club. Like, we were the it girls. Didn't have to take no clothes or just walk out in this money. So we all grew up and we're looking like, you know, she has a kid now. Miracle is on P Valley, like, and, and, and doing stuff. And we look back and I'm like, you know, I owe you an apology. She was like, you're so gifted. She's like, I've always been your friend. It's just you were um, mad at me. And I didn't understand. I said, you know what's crazy? You were a tad bit younger than me. And you reminded me. And they would say we kind of look alike. And I, I felt jealous. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, I am not afraid to say that. And I'm like, I, I was jealous of feeling like somebody could be me. And I didn't realize no one can be you but you. And she was like, wow, yeah, you did change. What kind of medicine they got you? I said, girl, I'm going to tell you later. Mm -hmm. It works. It works. Yeah, it, but we what? became really cool. And she was like, same thing with Cash Doll. It was just little minor things. It was like the littlest childish shit. And now I'm cool. When I see people, me and Alexa Sky, like it would be just little things, comments and stuff. And I'm like, man, squash this. Like, what's up? Now Alexa's asking me. She wants to do a women empowerment thing. And she's like, I want you on the thing, on the panel. I'm like, sure. And when you just are honest and you're in a headspace of, like, healing, it, it was easy. It was, like, 20 people I made over. I was like, hey, Damn. I didn't even know I didn't like that many people. Okay. I, out of those 20 <laughs> people, was anybody harder to, like, win No, back people over? were actually more hurt. Some mm -hmm. people I really hurt. And I was just like, I never noticed I hurt you. They're like, yo, you hurt me really bad. Who was the person that with that ticket? Like, you hurt my hurt feelings, the, the Deb. Worst? Deb and me actually had a bad fallout. Wait. And, but it wasn't a fallout. It Miss was Debbie? me. Yeah. Uh, me and, mm. Damn. And I, she said, you hurt me. Because you got to understand, when I was doing my crazy shit, like on doing crazy stuff, just one in my life and stuff, taking out my IVs, this lady was right there just watching. Like, y'all put the IV back in. I go ahead and send over to Peachford. Go and get her some help. And she was just always, she never told my secrets. And I hurt her bad. And then it's like we talked. And now we just like this. And I, I realize I'm like, it's my words. It's it's me not talking and conversing with people and really telling them how I feel. If I just tell people how I feel, none of this would happen like this. And that's what I was learning from healing with everybody. I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. All right, who's next on the list? <laughs> they get it. Who else? And it, it worked for me. But I couldn't do that if I wasn't in the space that I'm in. Mm. I would always try to blame other people. Then when I sit and I'm thinking about like why we fell out. And I'm like, damn, it was me. Damn. Damn, I was hoping one of the situations I was healing, like trying to fix, I was like, maybe it's them. And then when they broke it down, I'm like, damn, it was me again. God damn, <laughs> damn. And I fixed it and it was fine. So yeah, that's good. That, that was actually a great feeling to like talk to people. And it was women because majority was my family was with men. And I'm like, I just want to be so much closer to women. I want to have women in the industry that's friends of mine and really just be cool because I like people. Like, I like to have that. And I started having more friends that were women. I'm like, that's yeah, dope. Mm -hmm. It's a great feeling. It's a wonderful feeling because you don't want to just a whole man fan base. Like, that's y'all cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nah, I appreciate it. Y'all not gonna dress up and play and make up with me and stuff in my gay best friend. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I appreciate the uh, the transparency <laughs> and um, you being able so willing to talk to me. Nah, of course, I was like, damn, he about to go for it. Nah, nah, I told you it was gonna be a good conversation, man. I ain't wanna. That's not the Say, plan. Let me to, like, smoke this blunt fire. Nah, that's man. never the that's never the plan. My 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 conversations is for healing. Like I'm always. Nah, I know it was it was. This is a vibe. This is definitely a vibe. Nah, I appreciate it, man. Right. Um, I mean, unless you want to <laughs> tell me say something, you love out. That you tell me. Mm. Oh, am I? Ask I was like, like, how you get my number? You can ask her. Go ahead, ask her. Mm -hmm. I was like, how you get? What was your question? Oh, about? I gotta get y'all some. We gotta talk about that. Um, so you spoke about spoke about healing and 
Yeah. I used to seek love through men. Like, I used to, like, that's what made me a love hoe so much. And now there's a different definition of when I say love hoe. Like, I've learned through those. Like, you can't seek love through someone else if you don't even love your damn self. Because now you're seeking something that's an emptiness that should be filled up with you. And now it's filled up with another person. So what happens when that person disappears? What happens if that person doesn't stay? You, you It's like a malfunction. It's like you can't. And if you have kids, it's even worse because now you're putting it on your kids. That's why a lot of abusive things. You see like this random woman kills her kids because of this. And a woman runs over um, a man and stuff because it's it's tragic. It's like multiple you're not loving yourself. You're not really getting into you. You're not sitting sometimes when it's, if it irritates you to be by yourself and just sit in the mirror and stare at yourself for like 20 minutes straight and just look at little details of yourself that it's something wrong. You should be able to look at yourself and smile and enjoy being by yourself and enjoy and loving on you. And it's difficult. It takes a while. You just got to replace it. Like, don't put your love all into a man. Don't put your love into nobody but God. And then after that, family and friends that really care about you. Put it into something that you love to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was doing. I was like, yo, when I would break up, when people would break up with me, and I'm, I'm such a loving person, I would just be like, damn, why they left me? Why they left me? I go to the studio. And all that shit be gone. I sing about it, play about it, and you just got to find it takes a while to just find what, so you can love you, so you can love properly. Mm. Cause you putting your love into a man right then and there, you don't even know how to love. Mm. Like that should tell you right there, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know, you don't have no clue what you're doing at all to do that. That's crazy. And I used to do that. Man used to leave me, I used to lose 20 pounds, all types of stuff. What, I'm not doing that no more. Well, Mm-mm. keep looking good, man. Keep doing your thing. It's the fruit. Uh, <laughs> what you what you got here, man? What's um, the lashes? How can somebody get that? How can we get the lashes? How can we get the lighters? I'm coming home. You know, you gave me a good old fruit while I'm doing this interview. You know, might call you good anyway. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you just said, but you know what I was saying. I should do a mukbang right here and just be like the AM. What is that called? A A. I can't stand that. Me and my brother used to fight. Now I watch it all day. So, you know what I'm saying. Back up. I'm wearing my uh my mama in law earrings too. Shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? Mind your business. I ain't telling you who it is. <laughs> look, okay, so look, let me be serious. Hey y'all. It's um my lashes, lash by Von Krishna. It's four different types of 3D minks. Um, you they're reusable. And I did it because um, my makeup artist told me I had a big eyelid for mm-hmm. makeup. Like, so I was like, you know, maybe I should do some lashes and people like them. They're pretty cool. So I got y'all some. And then I got some lighters. Because, you know, people be stealing your lighters and stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? Now when somebody steals, it be like, ah, bitch. You didn't get that from me. Yeah, I know that. I mean, mom. you didn't get that from somebody else. Mm. That's mine, bitch. She gave that to me. Get back. You might want to light a lighter. You might want to set somebody on fire. Got it. You know what I'm saying? You might want to set some tires on fire, toxic stuff. You might want to just... How can they? How can they get you get your saying? lashes or your, or your lighters? <laughs> just toxic shit. No, but um, you can go on the site um, iamjohnny.com, and um, I got shirts, hoodies, and then also the Johnny Boutte cream is for. I was kind of heavier than this, and I had dark spots in between, like my legs, because of the rubbing is dead skin, and also spots on my booty parts. And um, it's vegan friendly, and it just you put a mask on, it tightens the skin, and then the cream actually makes your skin go back to the normal color it was, and takes away the dead skin. It heals it, and it's vegan friendly. Mm. So I did that product too. I just like products. I think it's cool. I try them on me, and then I'm like, you know what? This will help somebody. Let's do it. It's been doing pretty good. All jokes. I know I joke a lot, but it's just a wonderful product. So I brought y'all these and lighters. Oh, and then I didn't so know if y'all had spots on y'all, but I don't see y'all booties and stuff. I was going to be like, show me anything. I'm going to get my girlfriend one. I appreciate it. <laughs> show me anything. Hey, man, I thank you for coming, uh, chopping up with me. I appreciate you so much. Uh, hopefully, we talk more after this. And um, hey. Johnny Blaze, everybody. Mr. J. Hill is a wrap. We out.